What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to set up your own enshrouded dedicated server using the Steam version over here. Searching your library after you bought enshrouded, you should find the enshrouded dedicated server that you can launch up and download. If you'd like to learn how to do this without needing Steam installed using Steam CMD, you'll find a guide linked for that in the description down below. This is great if you'd like to run it on a different computer on the same network or over the internet. Because we're doing this here, you'll likely be running it on the same computer you're playing the game on, so just make sure you have a relatively powerful system. Without further ado, once it's downloaded, you'll need to launch it up at least once to generate a few missing files. When you eventually see host online, you can quit this and navigate to the dedicated server files so we can configure our server. Right click, manage, and choose browse local files. In here, you'll find quite a few files, but what we're looking for is enshrouded underscore server dot JSON. Open this with any text editor, such as Notepad, Notepad++, or something like Sublime Text. In here, we can change the name of our server. So I'll call it Troubleshoots Server. Set a password. If you'd like, you can set a save and log directory. If you're a power user, you can bind the server to a specific network adapter. But for most people, including you and me, you'll be leaving this as just four zeros. Then game port and query port should be left as is, unless you're running multiple servers on your computer, in which case you can change these. Just make sure they're still one apart as they appear. Finally, slot count, you can change this to be 8, 16, or anything you want. This is the player limit for your server. When you're done, save this file. At this point, you should be able to join your own dedicated server, but there's a few more steps we need to do in order for other people to join us as well. In order for someone to join us on the same local network, as in they're sitting next to us or over the internet, we'll need to first allow it through our Windows firewall. Of course, if you're using a third-party antivirus or firewall, you'll need to handle that separately. But for the most part, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the text version of this tutorial. I haven't written it yet, so here's a Power World one. You'll scroll down until you see this colorful section over here. These are commands to allow the enshrouded dedicated server through our Windows firewall. Simply copy these, then hit start, type in PowerShell and run PowerShell as admin. What you'll be doing is right clicking to paste or hitting control V followed by enter a few times just to make sure everything is sent and run just like this. Now we successfully allowed all of the required ports for our enshrouded server through the Windows firewall. So it's 15.6.3.6.7 through both TCP, UDP, inbound and outbound, allowing anyone on our local networks to join our server, assuming once again, you don't have a third party antibiotic or firewall. If you do, you'll need to handle those separately. Now, in order for people to join us over the internet, there's one final step, and that's port forwarding. Don't let the name scare you off, it's really not that difficult. It should be possible for everyone unless you're running ancient router hardware and you're not able to log in and port forward or your ISP is preventing you either by having your router system locked down or they've disabled port forwarding for you, in which case you'll need to call them and get access to your router as well as make sure that port forwarding is allowed and set up for you. They may need to change something on your account first. Once they've done so, you'll need to head across to your router's admin page, log in, and head across to the port forwarding or application forwarding section. It should look something like this. This web page is just an example, as there are so many different kinds of routers out there, I can't do a guide for every single one of them. However, this tutorial should explain basically what you need to do. To port forward 15, 6, 3, 6, and 7, you'll likely need to enter an internal and external port. So I'll enter 15, 6, 3, 6 here. And because it allows me to enter a range, comma separated or hyphen designated, we can simply enter both of these ports in one single rule. But you may need to port forward each of these ports separately. Then we'll need to allow it for both TCP and UDP. And because I can choose a combined option, I won't need to enter both of these separately. You, however, may need to. Then your local IP address is the IP of your system running the dedicated server. For me, it's filled in most of the information here, 192.168.1.something, and I'll need to enter those last few digits here of my system. To find your local IP, hit start and type in terminal or command prompt and simply open it. Then inside of here, type in IP config and hit enter. You'll see all of the information about all of your network adapters. What we're doing is looking for the way that we connect it to the internet, in my case, Ethernet, IPv4, and in here you can see 192.168.150. 
This is my PC's local IP address. We'll enter just 50 as they're only asking for the last group of digits. I'll then click add and now we've successfully port forwarded to our PC and people over the internet should be able to join using our external IP. And of course, after a few minutes of running the server, it should appear on the public server list. That's great. Just a quick note, if you have multiple routers between you and the internet, such as a fiber box to one router to another, then to your PC, you'll need to port forward at every hop along the way. So the fiber router points to the first router, the first to the second, and the second to your PC. If you need help with multi-router port forwarding or would like more in-depth information about port forwarding, you'll find very detailed guides in the description down below to help you along this new quest. Once you've port forwarded, you're able to launch up your dedicated server. And with this running, we can now fire up the actual game and join our server. However, if you're not able to wait 10 to 15 minutes for it to be listed on the dedicated server list, you can add it directly. Go to view at the very top of Steam, followed by game servers, and in here, on the favorites tab, you're able to enter information. So I'll click the plus here, and it'll be typing in 127.0.0.1 colon 15.637 to join on our own computer if we're hosting it on the same computer like I am. Otherwise, if you're hosting it on a different local computer, you can use 192.168.145, for example, or whatever the other computer on your network is. Otherwise, if you're trying to connect to a server over the internet, you can enter 13456, whatever, the external IP of the person hosting the enshrouded dedicated server. Upon clicking OK, it should be added to the list. I'll enter the local 127001 and click OK. Then you can see it appear on the list, as mine does here. I've got it running on my computer, so 127001, and I've got it running on the computer next to me, just to make sure everything's working properly. 12168145. In order to join our dedicated server, you can select it and choose connect. It'll then fire up the actual game itself. And because we've favorited it, even if we don't see it on the list quite just yet, it should appear for us as we've manually added it. So I'll go play, join, and you should see it appear at the very top of your list up here. Otherwise, you can search for it, enter your server name, and assuming it appears on the list already, you may need to wait a few minutes, you'll be able to join it straight away. So we'll load in, create a new character if necessary, and you'll wake up on your brand new server, head straight outside, and after letting ourselves out, enjoy our brand new dedicated server where your friends can join and play as well with you. That's really it for this quick detailed guide. If you'd like to host it using Steam CMD, instead of Steam itself, you'll find a guide for that linked in the description down below, as well as anything else that you may find interesting. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.